Attention Institute personnel. A quick reminder that the next stream of Stellaris Invicta begins on our Twitch channel one hour after this video goes live. Until then, be sure to check out the Templin Commissary, where we've just launched a number of new t-shirt designs based on the Republics of the Confederacy, a map of the Antari system, and the amazing poster Liberation Day. You'll find the links in the description. As the Earhart Flotilla moved to scatter its settlers across the whole of Antares, a single great colony fleet was transformed into many. But of the six million people that had unexpectedly arrived within the Trinary Star System, a few hundred would never set foot upon the surface of an alien world. The swirling mass of exotic gases and dust clouds that enveloped the system distorted and blocked communications, and in a brave attempt to keep the lines of communication open, a group of volunteers would remain in the void of space. While the enormous colony ships of the flotilla landed across Antares, many of the fleet's smaller auxiliary craft were separated from their carriers and hastily converted into rudimentary stations. They were left adrift above each world settled, in the Great Ring of the Diego Belt and in fixed orbits all across the system. It was intended to act as a kind of relay network, with each station amplifying electronic signals and enabling them to cut through the miasma. They were named the Antares Pioneers, and the entire Earhart colonization flotilla vowed that they would earn the sacrifice of these individuals. There had always been the slim hope among the colonists that if even basic spaceflight was achieved within a few years after landing, that the relay stations might be resupplied or relieved. But the pioneers knew better. Each understood it would be a one-way trip. One of the early great tragedies of the settlement of Antares was that the tremendous effort and courageous sacrifice made by the pioneers was not enough. The relay stations were never able to fully pierce the miasma, the struggle had been in vain. For a time, a few worlds were able to keep in contact, but the resources needed to maintain the connection were unsustainable. In a few tragic instances, dwindling power supplies forced the colonists to tearfully sever the link to the pioneers in orbit, damning them to live the remainder of their days in silence. In other cases, those on the ground could only listen in horror as mechanical failures doomed those in orbit to a horrific death. Honoring the courage and sacrifice of those individuals was one of the first priorities of the Antares Assembly once reunification had finally been achieved some 200 years later. Everything from schools and parks to cities and moons would be named after the pioneers but perhaps the most fitting tribute was the creation of a new organization tasked with the stewardship of Antares itself. Unlike many of the institutions established under the Assembly and then the Confederacy that succeeded it, this service would be free to operate across the entire star system without restriction. It shares the name with those brave few who placed their lives in the service of their fellow colonists, known today as the Antares Pioneer Corps. While technically one of the Confederacy's uniformed services, it is unique in both its mission and jurisdiction. Its three primary objectives are maintaining the system-wide safety, security, and stewardship of the Antares Trinary Star System. As part of its mandate to contribute to the continual accessibility and security of the system, the Pioneer Corps provides aid to navigation, communication, traffic management services, and orbital search and rescue operations. Additionally, it supports other government departments from both the Republic's and wider Confederacy by providing ships, aerospace craft, and other services when requested. By design, the Pioneer Corps are highly decentralized and even the most junior personnel is expected to assume a great deal of responsibility. The institution is noteworthy for its quick responsiveness and adaptability in a wide range of emergencies. It is perhaps the most flexible institution operated by the Confederacy, equally in demand in both peacetime and war. While it operates normally under the Department of Public Security, during a national emergency, provisions allow for it to be transferred to the Department of the Navy. While such a transfer has never taken place, the service has nevertheless been deployed to aid in military operations. 
their unparalleled experience conducting orbital insertions has made several of its units unofficially classified as a type of special forces, and several of its ships and teams participated in the liberation of Torix. This early precedent, whilst somewhat controversial within both the Pioneer Corps and the wider Confederacy, means the institution will almost certainly be involved in any future major conflict. The Pioneer Corps is one of only a few services allowed to operate without restriction in every Republic of the Confederacy. It has become so adept at certain operations that it will often be requested to take part in even terrestrial operations related to search and rescue, law enforcement, or orbital security. While it maintains terrestrial bases in each republic and an orbit of each world, its primary headquarters is a station known colloquially as the Lighthouse and located deep within the Diego Belt. An additional administrative headquarters is located in the Confederate capital of Sagallo. In addition to these headquarters, the Pioneer Corps also operates a network of relay stations, anchorages, and refueling depots across the Antares system. Their primary function is to support the Corps' fleet of starships. These range in size from larger cutters, meant to undergo high-endurance deployments across the system, to smaller dropships, auxiliary vessels, and aerospace craft. The construction of new outposts and stations, as well as the establishment of colonies past the boundaries of the Antares system, has further increased the authority of the Pioneer Corps. Together with the Confederate Navy, it has established bases on a number of extrasolar stations, with regional headquarters located in the Intisar and Aljana systems. Predating both the formation of the Confederate Navy and Army, the Pioneer Corps is known as the senior service within the nation. The sight of its cutters emblazoned with the distinctive stripes of the Corps piercing the Antares miasma has become iconic, a reminder to both the citizens of Antares and the wider galaxy that the Confederacy is always ready. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. 